Hello. <laughs> hey y'all, this is Bowling for Fruit. I can never say fruit. Fruit. Bowling for Fruit Q&A. I am Nicole Roche, also known as Plant-Based Nicole Roche, and we got Remsen coming on soon, aka Tribe by New Art. This is a Q&A uh, with uh, Remsen who will be joining us. He is a high raw vegan nutritionist and he has a lot of knowledge. So if you guys have questions uh, that you've been wanting to know, hey, uh, Remsen, if you have questions, you know, put them in the question box. Uh, go ahead and request to join Remsen. Hey, y'all, come on in, come on in. This is a Q&A, so I need y'all to get your questions ready. This is Bowling for Fruit Q&A. I got my grapes here ready, you know. We come through with our bowls of fruit, a.k.a. snacks, and uh, we're here to answer your questions, more so Rimson, because he's the one that's smart. Okay, hold on, Rimson. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, I can see you. What you, what you mean, I'm the one that's smart? What is that supposed to mean? Like, you ain't smart. <laughs> I'm smart, but like not like nutrition wise. <laughs> smart enough. I'm smart enough. I got a little little something something in my brain. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm all right. I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, the uh, I had to I had to rush back from the grocery store <laughs> because I was stuck online because the self checkout lane they like to close the self checkout lane in the most busiest times. Oh dang it! So, you was doing so last minute have like, last yep, minute yep, last minute. Well, in between calls, you know, because I've had calls all day. Oh, okay, because so, you're busy. Yeah, I'm busy. That's all I know. Busy, busy. Squeeze in, squeeze in whatever I can whenever I get oh, out of this chair. So, you know, I got, I got a bunch of tangerines here and I'm peeling my grapefruit. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? What else so, did you do today? What else did I get? What else did you eat today? Uh, not much, honestly. I only had one meal, which was my my chocolate oat pudding. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's what that's all I had so far today. So I need to make that. I am, you talk about it a lot, and it be sounding good. I sure do. It's one of my staples. I'm honestly, I can't this summer. Okay. I think it's going to be a fully raw summer where I just eat, eat just eat just fruit and nuts all day every day. That's it. Just yeah, that always it. sounds. It sounds so. It sounds so like I don't know what the word is. It just sounds hella refreshing and just flowy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just sounds like it's right to do in the summer, like just fruit, freshness, yeah. and some nuts. I've been relying more so on cooked foods lately because I got burnt by the food selection too many times with the fruit. You know? I think I, I think I kind of increased on the cooked foods too. And I think that's just, it's just a normal thing for me. Like certain seasons, my body just wants a little bit more cooked. I still try not to eat more than one cooked meal in a day though. But, um, but I feel like I've been eating a cooked meal every day as opposed to normally I do, um, you know, I do cook meals every now and then and definitely not more than a day. But I think I've been eating at least one meal a day every day lately. And that's OK. It, it, I just listen to what my body says, like there's times where it just wants all fruit. Sometimes it wants all raw. Sometimes it wants high raw. Sometimes it wants, you know, which I'm still doing high raw, but I am eating that cooked meal every day. So, um, but I still try not to do more than, more than one cooked meal in a day. It just, I feel better. You know what I mean? It's a good balance. Mm hmm <clears throat> I hear you. I got some grapes going on. Hey, you guys, mm -hmm. this is Q&A, Bowling for Fruit Q&A. This is Rimson. I'm Nicole. Uh, Remsen is a high raw vegan nutritionist. He's been vegan for seven years. Ten. Ten. Woo -woo. I'm plant-based. And the reason why I say I'm plant-based is because I did not 
do it for the animals. Although I do feel bad for the animals. That wasn't my reason. And, um, you know, it's more so the diet for me. Um, so that's why I say I'm plant-based, but it's been 13 years for me. Okay. This Q and A, get them questions in the question box. Come on, let's go. I'm going to start it off. I got a question about vaginas. <laughs> I don't know if you know the answer to this, if you're knowledgeable in this area, but as you know, women, when we, when we get older, you know, we'll be going through perimenopause or menopause. And uh, perimenopause is kind of like the stage right before menopause because you don't become menopausal <laughs> until you haven't had a cycle for 12 whole months, right? Once you haven't had a cycle, menstrual cycle for 12 whole months, that's when you're all the way in menopause. And I just... Lord, I just like still wonder like why, why, Lord, why? Like I suffered all my life with menstrual cramps. And now that I am pretty much losing my cycle, it's not all the way gone, but it's like yeah, you're now perimenopausal. That I'm menopause, huh? So you're perimenopausal. Premenopausal is before you go through menopause. Perimenopausal is during perimenopause, and then postmenopausal is after you you're all the way through and you're you no longer have a cycle. I'm so confused about all that. Okay, all I know is when I got my hormones tested, they say my hormone levels suggest that I'm in menopause, <laughs> but I'm not in full menopause yet because I haven't gone 12 months without it. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Is that pre, peri? The peri. Right. So I'm perimenopausal, and it sucks. Sorry. <laughs> um. I, I wanted to ask, okay, word on the street <laughs> is the vaginas be vagina in. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So when vi that is true. <laughs> That's very true. So vaginal dryness, like when when women reach a certain age or perimenopausal ish stuff, they're not able to lubricate the, the way they did once. They might even need assistance with some lubrications. And it still might hurt to have sex with their spouse. It Any depends on the company you keep. That's what, it's, what it re that's what it really depends on. Say what now? It depends on the company you keep. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> okay, shut up. So listen, so, and then there's some women that still, you know, they get aroused and stuff, but they might still get aroused by their partner, but their vaginal is still dry because it, just it, because it, or it might not be as lubricated as it used to be. And the mm -hmm. sex is painful. So do you know about that? Do you know like what women can do to... Well, first of all, well, first of all, you gotta um, takes a little bit more time to kind of get get things going, right? You just gotta be patient. <laughs> We're getting things going. You can't just jump up in there like that, um, you know. So, you know, whoever you're, uh, you know, doing the tango with, you know, I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta put a little bit more time into the. Uh, this is a generic the, question. Pre -game. This ain't, this ain't yeah. about me. This is a generic overall question. I'm not <laughs> talking about you. I didn't say anything about you. I'm not talking about you. I don't know what your business is. I'm not talking about that. I'm staying generally <laughs> speaking, right? Um, and then also, I mean, there's things that you could do. So, for, exa for example, exercise that helps to improve your hormonal balance and your libido, right? Mm -hmm. uh, staying hydrated. So definitely eating a high fruit diet definitely helps. Um, having more, you know, healthy dietary fats, right? Polyunsaturated fat sources. Uh, so, you know, having your avocado, your almonds, Brazil nuts, things like that, that helps, right? Mm -hmm. as, far, as far as your hormones are concerned, right? Um, doing that whole one cantaloupe a day, right? Three pounds of, three to four pounds of cantaloupe or four, three to four pounds of watermelon a day helps getting adequate sleep right that helps as well um black cohosh 
tea that helps hibiscus tea right moringa tea it's, these it's, are some of the things that really help with that as well it's a hibiscus huh? it's just, i have a raspberry hibiscus tea is that the same or it has to be hibiscus well i mean that's just raspberry and hibiscus together mm -hmm. and they both help you know Okay. So you, you had to take a full spectrum Probably approach, related. right? Mm -hmm. Alcohol don't don't do what you think it may do, so avoid that. You're talking about um, drinking alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything that reduces oxygenation and causes dehydration. So no fried foods, cooking with oil. Um saturated high saturated fat diet foods um smoking drinking none of that kind of stuff i know you're still kind of young so you probably haven't really encountered any one or known anyone specifically that was like oh my the sex is painful now because i'm you know going through menopause perimenopause due to mm. losing heart losing hormones you you don't really you ain't in that age bracket where you know anybody like that huh um i wouldn't say all of that well um <laughs> i have um i have a <clears throat> a wide variety of experience with um people who are younger and older than me <clears throat> so i've encountered that before what you trying to say <laughs> Sweet daddy. <No. laughs> yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really, uh, I didn't really discriminate based on age. <clears throat> so you say you dated older women that might have had some vaginal dryness ailments. Yeah, have, having some hormonal issues in general. Yeah. And what did she do? Well, for one, I was like, you got to stop drinking alcohol. That's that's number one. <laughs> number two, you had to eat more of a plant based diet. Did you use lubrications? I mean, I'm not gonna get too graphic, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Come on, yeah. bro. this is like some real deal. This is some real stuff. This ain't we ain't being nasty. We just, you know, I, was, I, was, I don't want really to get too graphic, you know. But we didn't necessarily need to use, you know, too many uh, external, uh, you know, things to kind of grease the wheels a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Showstopper is laughing. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, we have yeah. some questions. We have some questions. Student to life. Are you still here? Says, what are you drinking in the cup? Is he talking about me? If you're talking about me, I'm drinking this. Ooh, this delicious harvest tea. And I have two cinnamon sticks in it. And a little bit of stevia that I got. From oh, got the whole cinnamon stick in there? I have two cinnamon sticks in there. Look at that. You're not playing. Oh, cinnamon, by the way, that's actually very good. Um for getting getting you. things um Ooh. you know, See? getting things moist. See it? Mm-hmm. Um cin cinnamon helps with that, you know, a little get thing, you know, greasing the skids, so to speak. <laughs> uh so that's what I'm drinking, some tea. Because why? Because I don't drink coffee anymore. I am 10 weeks sober um here we go not that not that tea is replacing it tea does not replace coffee but sometimes i just want something warm to drink so you know i'll drink tea if i want something warm but um okay back to the question box what raw foods do you eat that make you feel full the most watermelon makes me feel full the most <laughs> but of course that's not in season right now yeah, that's a good nice question. Cream. I mean, nice cream. Yeah, I, th I think I would probably say maybe bananas. You don't stay full for very long, though. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> so like when it comes to like fruits and things like that, you don't stay full for very long. So you can eat like a ton of fruit. Um, and you can it can be pretty filling. But, you know, a few, you know, a couple hours later, you're gonna be a little hungry. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? So, Sometimes if I make a big smoothie with like four frozen bananas maybe a cup of blueberries and some almond milk or something i'll feel full like because of that the bananas are so i don't know 
they're heavy. And if I have like yeah. four in the blender, I don't know. It, it's different though. If I drink a smoothie with four bananas versus if I just ate four bananas, I don't know if it's the same you know, feeling. Adding like, adding like a tablespoon or two of nut butter to a smoothie helps it, helps it be more filling. Oh, yes. Then, I, you know, more dietary fats. You know, if you cut your dietary fats low enough, you'd be hungry all the time. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you increase your, that's why I like, you know, dietary fat to be around 15%, 20%, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so student to life also asked, do you just eat fruit all day? I don't know who he's talking to, but I personally <laughs> don't eat all fruit all day. Um, there's some days where I do do like a fruit reset, if you will, for a whole day, but that's like maybe once a month or so. Uh, what about you, Remsen? Do you eat off? I know you don't. I'm not doing. I'm, I'm not doing that right now. But <laughs> once it shirts off season, though, I will be for sure. Oh snap! The abs is coming through. I'm gonna get out of hand. in 2024. I'm about to get it in, bruh. I'm about to be kind of snatched. Me and Remsen gonna, gonna be snatched. No. <laughs> I'm gonna come up on the stream oiled up. It's gonna be obnoxious. <laughs> I'm going to be coconut oiled up. <laughs> yeah, yo, why is he so shiny and lubricated and oiled up? I'm going to be oiling up on the stream. <laughs> I'm going to be doing all of that. On the live, you're going to be getting all kind of little roses and things like that. It's, it's going to be obnoxious. I'm going to go on TikTok oiled up. Your bank, you know? your bank account going to be fat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be that guy. Who's the guy? He's all oiled up eating fruit. Who's that? What's that guy? That's it. <laughs> no, nah, I'm gonna stop. I'm. I. I don't. I. I have to be super shameless to do that. I can't do that. I dare you. I double dog dare you. You know how much might, money you, know. you make. You know how much money you'll make on that live, child. I might do it. I might have to do it. I might. I might have to do it. I double I might have to get dog shameless. dare you. I double dog dare you. Not <laughs> uh, avocados and watermelons. My duel for feeling full following Omet. That's what she for foreign said. By the uh, way, avocado is really good for women's health. Avocados, yeah. I love avocados. For, I for love sexual health. avocado. Walnuts, avocado, cherries, cucumber, watermelon. Yum, yum. Those are those are some those those are some foods you'd want to consider. Absolutely. I love watermelon. I'm so sad that it's only And weightlifting. All right. Weightlifting helps. You want to get your libido up there? Get your weightlifting on. And I don't mean little two and five pound dumbbells, I'm talking about. <laughs> Why you gotta hate on people? What is that <laughs> all uh, uh, yeah, that's why I'm calling you out. I want to see you on some serious weight. You be styling and profiling and everything. Look Man. at you with all the colors. You got the high vibrational colors. She got the blues and the violets and all of this. Looking ultraviolet on the stream. She's the high cool vibrational way. colors. You got the coordination. Styling and profiling. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's all about you know that coordination. What? But you know what? I want you to coordinate the weights on that bar in the gym. That's what I want to say. I've been getting my weights in, okay? I worked out this morning as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm not talking about working out. I'm talking about I'm talking about some lifting. That's what I did. I lifted weights. I did a full body today. I want to see some. I want to see some struggling. I don't want to see. Some... I was I was I was I was doing. I did some squats and lunge. I had to kind of do the um, modified kind, but with a chair. But I did squats. I did lunges. I did I did everything. I did um. Uh, what do you call? It? Actually, we, I didn't do everything because we didn't do bicep, biceps and triceps, but we did shoulders and um, shoulders and back and legs and abs. I want to see a neck vein coming out. I want to see a neck vein. I'm crazy. See, no, I'm just playing. Your neck looking smooth. We want to see a neck vein. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> we want to see. We want to see struggle face. That's how we know who, when, when you're working. You're silly. Okay. Oh, we got it, Rimson. Okay. Showstopper says, what do you, <laughs> Showstopper says, what do you eat for dinner? Okay. I I'll have absolute, 
Oh, yeah. you go first. I have absolutely been crushing red lentil soup. Um, red lentil soup with like four cups of steamed broccoli. Mm. Lentils and have a lot blue. of protein, you guys, FYI. Hey, Tucson. Hey, homie. I see you in there in the in the group. Okay, so that's your dinner. That's what you've been eating every day? or that's Every like day. For real? Every day, re religiously. I, I mean, I put different seasonings and things like that, but that's what I've been doing every day. I don't eat a lot of tofu, but I've been on, like, every week I go grocery shopping at Trader Joe's. Every week, okay? And then I'll set, like, my my plan for the week and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to eat. Some, some days it might kind of, you know, detour from that, but overall, so my dinner for this week was um, salad, salad with, um, like, to, uh, what do you call it, cucumbers, red onions, bell peppers, and then I air fried some tofu and put that suck on the, on the salad and cut them up some tofu and then or there's a few nights i did some chickpeas instead of the tofu and then i was using normally i make my own dressing but i was being lazy this week so i was doing um the caesar dressing that i got from trader joe's but normally i make a tahini dressing that i love um so that was my dinner for this week um i'm probably going to do the same thing for next week Ch uh, salads for dinner between tofu or beans excuse me Preferably chickpeas, because like one cup of chickpeas is 14 grams of protein. And then when I make my tahini dressing, that comes out to 11 grams of protein between <clears throat> the tahini and the nutritional yeast. Um, and then my lunches this week were chickpeas with brown rice. Um, so... I had the one cooked cooked meal for lunch and then dinner was a salad with a little bit of cooked in it because of the tofu. But that's what I was having. Okay. All right. Gotta get my Thank I'm you. trying to get back on track, cuz. Cause my All birthday right, was last week. My birthday and Thanksgiving was last week. And um and I was eating a lot of, you know, just eating more than normal, plus eating like, you know, sweets and stuff like that. So I'm feeling a little off. I'm okay with eating junk food sometimes, so I'm, I'm not downing it. I'm okay with that. I know Remsen doesn't eat it at all, but, um, but I, you know, it just makes you feel off because I was eating it for like, you know, three, four days in a row. So I'm, I'm, I'm just getting back on track this week and just in, in terms of feeling better mentally and stuff. You, you booty! I'm so proud of myself. I already did my workout before before this live and because i was gonna do it after but i was like nah let me get that sucker over with <laughs> mm -hmm. oh another protein i mean another question <laughs> uh student of life student to f life student of life says what's your protein source for me or you you, you want to go first um generally speaking i have two high protein meals in, in a day um so that'd be my oat pudding where i'll make uh i'll make it with uh rolled oats plant-based milk pea protein isolate uh pb fit cacao powder cinnamon mm -hmm. and um tablespoon like two tablespoons of sugar cane Mm. And then um, my second sure, high protein you. meal of the day is <clears throat> my red lentils, my my red lentil soup with the broccoli. That so sounds... each meal, each high protein meal is like around. The first one is like sixty grams of protein, and the second one is like fifty and change. Dang! Do you put the broccoli in the soup, in the lentil soup, or you mm -hmm. eat it like on the side? Not put it in there. And I'm adding the avocado to it today. Mmm, that sounds bomb. Can you send me some? So that'll bring it up to like 60. Uh, FedEx, 60 FedEx grams. Me some. FedEx me some. I'm going to FedEx you some lentil soup. What's your recipe for your lentil soup? Like, 
What seasonings do you put? Because I'm not good at making lentils. I always mess it up. So I boil them. And I put them in the blender. Anybody else hot? Oh, I'm Ooh, Okay, what? <clears throat> um, yeah, so I'll put them in the blender after boiling them. And then I put them, uh, and then I put the seasoning. So I'll put two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a quarter, uh, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, three pinches of onion powder, half teaspoon of sea salt, uh, and three pinches of cayenne pepper. Um, and then, yeah, I'll blend it and kind of puree it in. And that's how I mix all the seasonings in. And I just add it in with the steamed broccoli. And so I'll do that same thing tonight, but the difference is I'll do sliced avocado on top. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me tell you what I've been eating all. Uh, this is my meal plan for the next week, y'all. I know y'all didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> so every morning, my breakfast has been the same, except for if I'm doing a cleanse, I might just do all fruit or if I just run out of my yogurt. But every morning... I have my unsweetened plant-based yogurt from Trader Joe's. At nighttime, I put some chia seeds in there and my blueberries and the stevia, and I mix it all up. And then in the morning, oh, chow, the chia seeds swell up a little bit, and then I'll eat it like with a couple pieces of fruit on the side, normally tangerines. So, oh, my God. Oh, my God, you guys. It is so bomb. Every morning, I cannot wait to eat my breakfast. Like, I'm serious. I'm not even playing. My husband hears me every night say, baby, I can't wait till tomorrow. He'll be like, why? Because I can eat my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm eating for breakfast. That's my little meal plan for now. And then for lunch, I'll have like some, what do you call those? Chickpeas and brown rice and either a vegetable with it or maybe some fruit. If I'm at work, sometimes I'll just eat fruit with it because I don't want to be bringing no broccoli or no Brussels sprouts to work and heating it up. Cause you know how that be stinking sometimes to be smelling like, you know what, what broccoli stinking? Huh? Broccoli don't stink. Yes, it do. When I open up the back, fresh bag of fresh organic broccoli, it be smelling like, and kale too. You ain't never smelled that? Do you ever eat mm. fresh kale and fresh broccoli or frozen? Because if you open up frozen bags, they don't stink. I don't know what you mean, a bag. Like, I mean, you if you get fresh and don't come in a bag. You have in, like, a bag of fresh broccoli, organic or whatever. Word? Somebody says broccoli does stink. It does. Don't it smell like somebody farted? <laughs> I hate that word. But anyway. Okay. So, so that's my chickpeas and brown rice in either a vegetable or a fruit. And with hummus. I must be getting it from like a really ghetto store because mine will just be on the produce. It'll just be just this thing, big head of whatever vegetable, and it'll just be <laughs> tied together with a rubber band. I wonder if that makes a difference if it's like that versus if it's in a bag. I wonder if that's the difference. Probably because if you're keeping it sealed up in a bag, I mean. Oh, maybe that's why. Okay. It's, Let me it's try trapping all whatever smells would be. Because um, Trader Joe's doesn't really have like all the fresh stuff like that. I mean, they have fresh, but it's in a bag. They don't have the what you're talking about with the rubber band, like Sprouts and Whole Foods does. So that's my lunch. Snacks are either like a, a apple with peanut butter or a hand some cashews with a piece of fruit. I know people say don't mix fat and fruits, but guess what? I've been doing it for years and I'm still alive. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I ain't had no issues with, you know, my blood sugar or anything like that. So um, that's snacks, um, either fruit and nuts or peanut butter and uh, apples or just fruit, all fruit. And then dinner is a salad either with um, some beans with all types of veggies in it and then my tahini dressing or I might be adding some tofu, air fried tofu uh, this week. I don't do it. I did tofu last week i'm doing it this week but i normally don't do tofu like that that often i just don't like to do a lot of soy stuff so that's my meal plan for a couple weeks i like to change it up but that's what i'll be eating i know no one asked but i'm still telling oh we got some questions 
<clears throat> what type of plant-based yogurt? Oh, dang, I forgot the name of it. It's um, at Trader Joe's, and it's 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 a cashew-based yogurt, and it's in one of those big, big things, um, the big container. If you go to Trader Joe's, just ask them, can you show me the unsweet cashew, unsweetened cashew yogurt, and it's in the big thing. I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, but it's uh, it's nasty if you just eat it. You have to put a little bit of stevia in it or whatever your choice of sweetener is. I like to use stevia because it's natural and it doesn't have any calories. <laughs> um, student of life, student to life, student of life says, what time do you have your first meal of the day? Remsen, you go first. Um, like around eight or nine. What time do you wake up? Around six or seven. Okay. <clears throat> During the week, I work, so I'm waking up like 7.20, and I usually eat like 9.30. I get to work at 8, but I don't end up eating until like 9.30, sometimes 10. Um, I just be getting caught up, but I'm surprised I'm able to wait that long. But yeah, and I don't do it on purpose. I ain't doing intermittent fasting or anything like that. It just ends up being that I end up eating like 9.30 or 10, and then... I do try to stop eating. I try not to eat after seven, at least during the week. Now on the weekends, that's different. The the the, the schedule, you know, I'd be off because I might be going out. Like tonight, I'm going out <clears throat> to a dinner with some friends and my husband, and then we're going to a concert. We're going to a restaurant at seven forty-five. Living the life. Living the good life. Saturday night. What's up? Are you gonna do one of them TikTok videos? Styling and profiling. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to make a TikTok video. Nah. And then, so, yeah, it's, but during the week, I definitely. make one of them lifestyle and luxury TikTok videos. <laughs> this is what the raw life looks like. <laughs> Hi, raw. I don't eat fully raw. I will never be able to do that, except for short term, like 30 days, 40 days. That's not my ministry to do that long, long term. That that's not your mind. ministry? <laughs> nope. That's just a little saying I do. Like in the church, you know, you serve in the ministry at church and stuff like that. I'm just playing around. But yeah, that ain't my ministry. That's not where God called me to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you... Okay, what about fruit, sugar, and teeth? What precautions we should take and how has it benefited your teeth? Um, I, for me, I don't, I don't know that it's benefited my teeth. It's my teeth are just regular. <laughs> um, <laughs> in 20, 25 years, I did have one cavity within the 25 years, the last 25 years, but um, it wasn't because of that. Cause I've been eating a lot of fruit for years and um, I had my first cavity, like, what was that? Six months ago, my first cavity since I was actually more than 20. My last cavity was when I was 21. And then I had my first cavity at 48 six months ago. So you have never had a cavity before? You never had one? I've never had a cavity. Oh, that's good. I had one. I think, um, I don't know why I got one because that was my first one, one since I was 21. So, you know, it causes cavities. Huh? Is bacteria causes cavities, not sugar. As long as you have good oral hygiene, um, you don't really. It's not really a thing you got to worry about. Sugar doesn't cause cavities. I will say that when you eat, you should rinse your mouth out really good. Don't brush your teeth until two hours after you eat, because if you brush it after eating acidic fruits and stuff right away, it causes your enamel to weaken. That's what I heard and read about. Like you have to wait until like two hours to brush your teeth after eating fruit and stuff, but you can rinse it out really good right after. Have you ever heard yeah, that? Fruit, fruit actually helps to clean your teeth. It does. <clears throat> uh -huh. Um. Okay. Well, there you go. Whoever answered that. A student yeah. of life is on the roll. A student of life be asking all the questions. I had that. Student of Life said, do you cook the chickpeas or use can? I'm about to be 100 up in this piece. I'm a lazy man. 
I am a lazy ninja and I go to Trader Joe's and get the organic canned beans and I rinse them out really good and, and you know, put them on my salads or if I'm going to eat it with rice, then I'll like heat it up in the pot or whatever. But yeah, I'm lazy. I don't make them from dried beans. I haven't yeah, made if dried you're gonna do, beans. If you're huh? going to do the dry beans, <clears throat> you soak them overnight and then cook them the next day. Um, I would say get a crock pot. I need to get a crock pot. I do. That way I you can get like a 20 cooking. pound bag of like the chickpeas or whatever if you're going to have them normally, regularly. Is that is that how you cook that. your is that how you cook your lentils? Yeah. You cook them in the crock pot? No, I, no, I just cook them in the pot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want to get I want to get a crock pot. Okay, so we answered that question. Next question: How many times does Rinson eat per day? Oh, like three, three or four. Okay. What about me? Why are you gonna ask me how many times I ate per day? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Rinson has been eating since I've been on the live. Is this a snack? And how many times do you eat? Or yeah, yeah, like around three or four. I mean, I eat, but I eat large portions at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. I just ate, I don't know, like a, a grapefruit and like, damn, how many was that? Six or eight tangerines, one of those. Not all I had was a bowl of grapes for my snack. That was like, I That's had a tiny bowl. Grapes. too. Huh? That's a tiny bowl. I ate like two pounds. Yeah, it was a tiny bowl. It was a snack. Yeah. You know, because I had, I just ate breakfast like. 20 minutes before we got on the live, I kind of ate late. And you know, my time is three hours from yours. So I ate like 11.30, my, my plant-based yogurt with chia seeds and blueberries and a couple tangerines, that's what I had. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really hungry, hungry. So, but I did have the grapes just because, you know, we're called bowling for fruit. So we got to come through with the bowl of fruit. So, but yeah, she's ladylike. So she gets these little, she gets these little snacks, these little portion size, you know. Oh, but child, but my salads though. My salads be like the bowl be like this. My yeah, you dinner, can't eat a small salad. You can't do that. Nah, that ain't. That's for the birds. Anybody got time for that? I get big yeah. salads. Um, do you guys take any supplements? Ooh, ooh, I love this question. Oh yeah, I take a lot of different supplements now. Now, <laughs> um, vitamin D, <laughs> uh, so, creatine. Hey, Vitamin D, oh. creatine. I'll be back. Answer um, that. I'm going to get mine. What else? Uh, <laughs> magnesium and zinc before bed. Actually, well, so I like to, I don't necessarily know what qualifies as a supplement necessarily, but there's certain drinks that I like to make. So like, like there's a drink that I like to make before bed um, to really maximize blood flow before bed. And that's going to be magnesium glycinate, uh, citrulline malate, and beta alanine, which are like a variety Wait. of different types of amino acids. Is that all in one thing? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So five grams of creatine monohydrate, three grams of beta alanine, and three grams of citrulline malate. And I put that together to make like a drink before bed. Oh, it's like powder or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I do that with 30 milligrams of zinc. And it's 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 really good for like, um, you know, sleep quality things like that. I don't know how much I need to do it, rather than I just like doing it. <laughs> yeah. To be quite honest, um, vitamin D three, I definitely do that um, for when I'm not getting you know enough sun exposure. So that's a good like fall and winter habit to do is to supplement with vitamin D three. Mm -hmm. Um. I do sea moss in the morning. I just <laughs> recently started doing that. Oh yeah, I got some. I need right. to make. I got to put it together, blend yeah. it. All. Um, I don't know how much it's affecting me now personally. I kind of feel the same. Uh, but you know, just experimenting with it since a lot of people ask me about it. <laughs> um, what else? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it.
Well, absolutely wonderful. Well, this is what I take, but I only take these, like, I'll say maybe three times a week. So this one is a food-based supplement, okay? Food-based meaning, like, it's not with all the fillers. It's made from food. I get it from, well, I used to get it from Whole Foods, and then I realized that it's heck of much cheaper on Amazon. So this one is a vitamin that has, I, I got this for the D3, but it has a bonus of calcium and magnesium in it too, but I really take it for the, the D3. Um, Food-based rainbow light. I get it on Amazon. It's much cheaper than Whole Foods. Um, and then this one is a, what do you call that? A multivitamin. Uh, this one is for women. It's called vitamin code raw one. So it's not only food-based, but it's also raw. Okay. I get this one. I used to get it at Whole Foods, but they, Again, too expensive, so I get it online. Garden of Life. This one is not food-based. It's just a regular filler. But again, I've been taking this for like 15, 20 years. And this is the only iron that does not make me constipated or hurt my stomach. And again, I only take these three, like three times a week. Um, and this one I get from, it's called Nature nature's blend i get this from a, a hospital called kaiser over the counter um but that's what i take just three times a week ish sometimes less than that <laughs> i don't I, the only ones i would say that like you really really got to make sure you really 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 feel are b6 no wait b12 and d3 we don't really get that from our food as plant-based eaters um, maybe you might get a little bit here and there but you don't get enough so that's why at least I try to supplement a little bit um, for those. But yeah, that's what I take. Um, but I do make sure I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables to get those minerals and vitamins, try to get most of my, my nutrition from my food. And then that just helps kind of fill in gaps a little bit. You know what I mean? How has Remsen managed to never have a cavity? What's the secret? Uh, even, so, even when you were young, I think I had nah, some. So, so I've, I've always been like a very hygienic person. Um, oh, so like I, oral. You know, say I'm not hygienic just because I had one cavity in 28 years. No, I wouldn't say all of that, but some people, they take it probably a bit uh, far. So I was the type of kid where I would wash my hands for like 15, 20 minutes. All right, just to give you some. <laughs> so background with that. I'd brush my teeth for extended periods of time. Like I could wash my, I could brush my teeth for like 10 minutes. But um, I stopped doing that. That was the thing I used to do a lot when I was a kid. I don't really do that so much anymore. Um, but yeah, I never, never got a cavity. Um, you know, but I would brush my teeth two to th like two times a day, sometimes three. Um, I do two times a day and I floss every night. Yeah, there you go. But, um, um, so, you know. Oh, yeah. That's good. I've always eaten a lot of sugar, though, all throughout my life. <laughs> now, not counting as a kid, because I don't remember in my childhood, but in my adult life, I've had two cavities. One at the age of 21, and then... 28 years later, I had one. What do you think caused you to have a cavity? I don't know. I missed one cleaning because I go every six months. And every six months, I always get great feedback from my dentist. I missed one. So I went a, a year without my cleaning as opposed to six months. And something happened in between that year. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because you got like perfect teeth. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know because, I mean, I've been eating this plant-based diet for 12 years, eating lots of fruit, so I never had one before. So it's not just because of my diet. There was something, I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't flossing deep enough. I don't know because I floss every night. I don't know. I'm, I was shocked myself. I was like, what in the world? Nicole? I remember before. I remember before I went. Uh, I remember before I went vegan, I was having problems with my gums, so I would brush my teeth. My gums were bleeding a lot, 
uh, when I was brushing my teeth. So I was having a lot of gum bleeding. Mm. And I went vegan, and that stopped happening. Oh, yeah? Yeah, ginger yeah, so I, I would get gum infections. Um, Is that my hair? And, and after that, I went vegan. Didn't have any, haven't had any of those issues ever since. That's good. Yeah. Um, also, I used to have seasonal allergies. So, like, I would get all the sinus pressure and everything like that. <clears throat> so, I, I, those things were compounding where my gums were hurting, my face was hurting because of the allergies and everything like that. Went plant-based, no seasonal allergies, no gum issues. That's good. Yeah. Excuse me. My you gum issues eat, actually you started. Candy. You also don't eat a lot of candy and sweets and stuff. Well, yeah, well, yeah that stuff I don't do. Um, yeah, that's good. I do. But sometimes. I started having the issues though after I got braces. Mm. Um. See, I'm kind of like with dentists. I'm like, I don't know. I'm a little iffy on dentists now because I had a really bad experience. It messed my mouth up. Oh, dang. Yeah, to get the braces on. I had braces when I was 15. Man, that mess was painful. Yeah, remember yeah, them braces hurt me a lot. I would have chronic headaches all the time. No, we don't eat seafood, honey. We eat um, fully plant-based. Um, oh, here's a good question in here from Chid Diago. I learned that protein and starch are an improper food combination, and the body cannot di digest both simultaneously. What are y'all thoughts on that? Well, I guess I'm all jacked up then because I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I That's kind of tough because all starchy foods have protein. Because sometimes I might have some beans with some rice or some tofu with rice. That's mixing protein and starch. Right. Yeah. I don't know. All star. All, I mean, starch rich foods tend to be uh, have a substantial amounts of protein in them. So. Mm. That's that's gonna be uh I don't know that's gonna be an impossible uh thing to get through there. Yeah, so, I mean, but yeah, I, this. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say I don't get caught up in all the rules. There's some things I take heed to. There's some things if it bothers me, I won't do. You know what I mean? Like people say, don't mix fats and fruits. But sometimes if I want a banana smoothie and I want to put some doggone peanut butter in it, I do it and I'm fine. You know, I my, I might not do do it all the time or uh, abundance of it but um i do it and just like the protein and starch thing i i interviewed dr aris Lathan. he said the same thing um but i do it sometimes i mean you know I mean? if you have a sweet potato like people who eat meat for instance they might have some chicken breast and sweet potatoes and some greens that's mixing starch and fruits or people who eat vegan, they might have, um, you know, tofu or seitan with a potato or a sweet potato. So I don't know. It's just kind of like you got to monitor how you feel. There's certain things you could take heed to. There's certain things that you need to just ignore people because it's not that deep. Like people say, don't eat fruit after six. I'm like, I'm going to eat fruit at eight o'clock if I want to. Yeah. Say something. <laughs> say something. No. Nah. Um, you know what I mean? It's kind of like what to each his own. Some things you need to listen to. Some things you got to just do what's best for you. That's just my take on it. Rimsha could be different. No, I mean, I don't have any, I, I don't have like those kind of hard line rules like that. Yeah. I think it's very circumstantial. You know what I mean? It depends on the person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, each person has their independent, the individual levels of gut health. Good right? afternoon. I mean, people. People have different levels of food sensitivities. Yeah. Right. So it really depends on the person. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. A question here. A question. Are there certain fruits that should not be eaten together? Here's another one. Here's another example. Everybody says don't eat watermelon, mix watermelon with other stuff. Now, typically I don't. I do just eat melons by themselves just because I just do. I like to enjoy it all in its splendorness. Oh, don't Splendor make, don't eat watermelon and raisins together. Why? Because it's nasty. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> 
So typically I only eat melons alone, right? But say like I'm at a party or a birthday party and somebody, all they got that I can eat is all fruit. And there's a there's watermelon, there's grapes, there's uh, freaking cherries and all kind of stuff, right? I'm going to make a meal out of that. So I'm going to mix my fruit because that's all they got that I can eat, right? But typically I will eat melons alone because I heard that I don't even know what the reason is. Something about the digestion, how it, it digests faster than all the other stuff, and you should eat it by itself. I don't know. But the point yeah, is that's that... Not, that's not really how that works. Um, when people say that, because you, you, you don't have to like, oh, well, this food digests in this amount of time, so you have to eat a food that it digests in the equal amount. That's not how it works. Um, because the thing is, food digests at the rates that it fit to digest. Once the foods all hit your food, your 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 stomach collectively, they all kind of just get mashed together in a soup of nutrients and then pass through your intestines. It's not like you know your your gut doesn't hold one food and then passes the other one and this segmentation it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Right, your stomach will essentially just mash up and and you know, and, and supify a food that's in your gut and then it'll pass through your intestines after that. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'm like, it's all going to come out anyway. <laughs> it's all going through the same system. It's all going through the same track. It's gonna all going to end up um, in the toilet. But as far as taste is concerned, that may be different. So, for example, you may not want to eat. So, like, I just say grapefruit and tangerines. You eat the grapefruit first, then the tangerines. If you eat the tangerines first and then the grapefruit, the grapefruit will taste disgusting. And the reason for that is because the grapefruit is less sweet than the tangerines. So if you eat the most sweet thing first, you eat the least sweet thing second, the least sweet thing isn't really going to have much of a taste. And it's going to be weird, right? Mm. Um, just like if you, you know, sometimes I'll eat grapefruit, tangerines, and kiwis together. Right. If you eat the kiwis last, the key, or, or you eat the um, what is it? I think it's yeah. If you eat the if you eat the grapefruit last, you eat the kiwis and the tangerines first. The grapefruit's gonna taste gross. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So you want to eat the sweetest thing last. That's that's generally you know how that works. The sweetest thing last. Uh. Don't eat dry apricot and cos and cantaloupe together right so you don't want to do, do dry and chewy with watery right because that's gross we don't do that <laughs> but if it's good to you then by you all means <laughs> you don't want to eat you don't you don't want to eat bananas and broccoli together you don't want to do that mm. you see your face you see that's so there's just certain, <laughs> there's certain food combinations you probably don't want to do because they're just gross together, right? Right, common sense. <laughs> yeah, but it's not going to ruin your gut health or anything like that, no. How much of the food do you guys eat is organic versus non-organic? That's a good question. 70-30? Um, Most of the food I eat is not necessarily organic. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah, I mean Thanks, when I'm rolling around from... when I'm rolling around in money like that, I can go and you know, pay fifty percent extra for all my food. <laughs> but until then we're washing everything in in, in baking soda and in, in, uh in make vinegar. it rain. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know, fifty, sixty percent organic wait. Berries are things that you eat the skin that should be organic. Huh? The things where you eat the skin that should be organic. So like yeah. grapes, berries, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, like like avocados and bananas. I wouldn't like trip off of that. But I mean, I do what I can. If if I go, I shop at Trader Joe's, and there's sometimes they have organic things. I get it. If they don't have it, I don't get it, and I don't trip. It ain't. I'm not. I'm going to live. You know, you don't want to try. I think like the the bell peppers I get are organic, the avocado, the arugula, um, certain things. It's just like certain things they have are organic, certain things they don't. I don't trip. Right. I don't go beating my head up about it. I'm going to do me. I wash it off. If it's not organic, I wash it, you know, 
to the best of my ability and I move on. You know? That's right. When you don't when you don't when you don't trip, you don't gotta worry about stumbling. You see? Mm -hmm. I heard that. That's a good one. I like that. Say that All again. Right. So yeah, it's time it's uh it's it's time for me to cut out. Oh, it's one o'clock. Can you sh answer this one last question quickly? Uh -huh. what, what foods shouldn't she eat to get? What foods shouldn't I eat to get my body in alkaline state? Shouldn't or should? Uh, she said shouldn't, but I think she meant um, should. Margarine. <laughs> Quit playing. Uh, yeah. Um, cooking with oil. Right, you shouldn't cook with oil. That's a good one. Or why? Uh, or just eat foods that are alkaline, right? To, to yeah, most essentially, I mean, most of your diet should just be alkalizing foods, right? So yeah, your Not diet should be though. right. Your diet should be rich in um, the five alkalizing minerals: so magnesium, manganese, calcium, potassium, iron. All right. So as long as you do that, um, and you know you're not eating all types of ex you know saturated fat and excessive protein, you'd be good. Right. So having yeah. a plant-based, fiber-rich, water-rich diet, minimal saturated fat. All of your fat sources should be primarily polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. And about 60 to 65 percent of your diet should be carbohydrates. As long as you do that, you're good. Yeah, and you can Google alkaline foods, alkaline plant-based foods to get an idea. But you don't want to have 100 percent alkaline. You need a little bit of acidity to balance it out. You know, maybe like 80. Well, you 20. can't be a you can't be 100 percent alkaline anyway because your body uh, is always engaging in uh, metabolism. And as your metabolism rolls on, there are metabolites that are produced. Uh, there will be acid formation, um, but that's what your kidneys are for, right? Yep. Um, so that's just a base, basic metabolic process where you you know you go from alkaline to acid to acid to alkaline, alkaline to acid, acid to alkaline, back and forth, back and forth, right? Um, you just leverage your diet to keep you know, your pH level closer to that seven point four. Okay. Right? That's okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I know you got to go. You just yeah, don't yeah. business like that. No, I'm just playing. Thank you, everybody, for joining in today. There's a few questions in the question box. Sorry we weren't able to get to your questions. Go ahead and send Rimson a message. Book a call with him if you have more questions. And um, tell him that you um, are referred from our Q&A. Um, and thank you guys so much. Thank you, Rimson. It's always a pleasure getting knowledge from you. Have a wonderful day. And don't you ever All watch right. me again. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See y'all. Bye. Oh, don't forget to follow us, you guys. God bless you. Bye.